Hello everyone, this is Scyther88, and today I'll be showing you how to check your sequencing data using a program called Seqman, which is part of the laser gene suite. Now, sequencing your plasmid or DNA fragment is very important for checking if the sequence is correct and or if the mutation you engineered is there and in the right place. It is a simple step, but necessary to make sure your cloning project goes smoothly. Okay, so here's a plasmid with a gene of interest inserted in. So let me just go over what we're looking at. Oh, by the way, this program that I'm using is called Seek Builder, and it is, it is also part of the Laser Gene Suite. I did a video about this a few years ago, so if you want to learn more about this program, you can go ahead and check that out. Okay, so in yellow here, highlighted, basically annotated, is my gene of interest. Orange here is the sequencing primer that I use. So this is the sequence that's based on the, uh, this, so this is the primer sequence. And here in this green box indicates a mu mutation that I engineer into this gene. And basically right now it is a D for aspartic acid. In the mutant form, I made this D into an N or an asparagine by simply changing the first nucleotide um, of the codon into a A instead of, instead of the regular G. So just to prove that, I'm going to just delete this G here, and then we're going to put in an N. Oh, sorry, not N. What am I talking about? Uh, N is the amino acid, so we'll put in A. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. So we put in an A, and now we have an N, which is the asparagine. So we'll just go ahead and change that back. Okay, great. So now we have the regular GAC instead of AAC for aspartic acid. Alrighty then. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, the blue is just basically showing the open reading frame. Uh, this is basically showing where it's. this is the ATG that's going to encounter when it starts to translate the messenger RNA. And it's going to just translate, starting here, this open reading frame, all the way to the end. And here is we have the stop codon in the end, TAA. Alright. If you have trouble visualizing this as a plasmid, you can uh, I can put this into a circular map. And as you can see, the the actual plasmid is quite large at 8,000 base pairs, and the yellow here is basically the gene of interest that I'm um, that, that I have cloned in. Okay, great. Now that we have the template and then we know what we're looking at, we're gonna go ahead and sh um, show you how to um, check your sequencing data. So we're going to just close out of this. No, I don't want to save. We're going to open up Sigman. Um, okay, that's fine. All right, now that we have Sigman opened up, we're going to go ahead and drag and drop our, our, uh, our template. So the plasma template, which I just showed you, is what we want our sequence to look like. So we're going to drag it in here. Next, we're going to drag in our sequencing result that we got back from the core facility, you know, the core sequencing facility that each university um, usually have. So, I always get two files back. Whoops, sorry about that. I always get two files back. The first file is called a .seq file, and the second file is called a .ab1 file. Now, in this case, we always want to look at the .ab1 file because this file contains the chromatogram which I'll be showing you uh, later. So we're going to drag in the .ab1 file. Okay, so now we have our plasma template and we have our .ab1 file. Alright, great. Now, what we can do, oh by the way though, um, for Seekman, all I'm going to show you is how to look at sequences after, after uh, to check your sequencing results. You can do a lot with this program, but I'm only really familiar, familiar with the basics. So we're gonna go ahead and click Assemble. Okay, great. And it says we have a 98% match in Contig1. That's really good, actually. I'll be telling you later on why we're not getting a 100% match. So we're gonna go ahead, let, let me maximize this, okay. We're going to go ahead and click on Contig1 over here in this window. Double click it. I'm going to maximize, maximize this as well. Okay, great. Now, 
we're going to scroll to the right. So here we see plasma template right here. So here's the sequence, which I just showed you earlier. We're going to scroll to the right, to the right, to the right. And eventually we're going to get to a point that we're going to see our sequencing result that we got back from the facility. Now, what we can do is expand this plasma template by, by clicking on this arrow here. And now what we can see is that the labeled elements in the plasmid template that I just showed you is also labeled in here, so it's very convenient. So this is the sequencing primer, so this is right here, and it was in orange uh, earlier on. And it makes sense though, right? If we look at the sequencing primer and we look down, and a little bit later is where our sequences, sequences is starting to read out here, okay? But as you notice, is that as we as we um, read the sequence, it's just very messy and there's mismatches and deletions at the beginning. This is very normal and it's actually irrelevant because if you expand your sequ sequencing result, which is, which will show the chromatogram, and uh, what you can see interestingly is that at the beginning here we have a chromatogram as being very messy. You see the peaks are very low; they're not very precise. Some are high, some are low, like. For example, this is triple C. It's it's just three uh three spikes like this, and they're not very sharp, not very focused, and this is why we get messy sequences at the beginning. And it's actually irrelevant because the chromatogram trace is bad. So it's okay if you get mismatches um, and weird stuff at the beginning. Um, it's not a big deal. And that's again, that's basically why we don't have a hundred percent match. But as you scroll through, though, all right, as you scroll through you can see that the sequences, the chromatogram becomes much sharper. And this is basically where it's relevant. Okay, so you want to make sure at this point that your sequences match up, right? So this, this all looks very, very good. And it does match up indeed. There's no mismatches or anything that I can see. However, the only area is right here. Right? This is the mutation that I wanted to make. And remember, in the original background, we have GAC, which is highlighted right here, GAC. But now, if you look right down, we don't have GAC anymore. Now, let me just go ahead and minimize this so you can see it better. Okay, there we go. See, GAC, and now in our sequencing result, we have AAC. And this is a direct, this is a mutate, the nucleotide mutation, single nucleotide, nucleotide mutation. That's going to change this codon, aspartic acid, into an asparagine. Okay? And if you just want to make sure that this mutation is correct, if you look at the trace, it is very high, very sharp peaks, and it's in a region where, where, where everything else looks very nice as well. So I feel this is very trustworthy. So whenever you get any kind of sequencing result back, you just want to go ahead and look through your sequence. And to check them, everything looks good in the area where the chromatogram is sharp. Um, if you scroll through towards the end, you can see the chromatogram will start to break down once again, right over here, for example. And this is where we get mismatches and all sorts of weird stuff as well, right? Especially in this region, um, the chromatogram is just bad. And again, this is really not relevant at all. And another reason why we don't have a hundred percent match. Um, in the uh, uh, based on the program, right? This is only a 98% match, but that's okay. Like I said, this this is this will always happen. Um, the beginning and end of a sequencing data file will always be messy. So basically, if you want to check um, the, so let's say you are interested in this region, right? This beginning region, or if you are interested in this end region here. You want to use different primers, right, to assess those areas. Um, as long as the region where your chromatogram is sharp and and it looks good, um, which would be not here, which would be like around this area, and for example, your mutation is here or multiple mutations, whatever you want to engineer, as long as this area looks good, then it's very safe to assume everything else in the plasma is fine as well. You don't have to design. A bunch of primers and sequence the whole entire plasma to make sure everything is okay. Um, of course, you can always do that if you want to, but it's really not necessary. Um, you can also try other QC uh, quality check by maybe digesting the plasma using different 
restriction enzymes and you can run out the DNA and see if the band matches up to the expected size. Um, but again, that's very optional. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. All right, so basically to the take home message is that remember it is always a good idea to check your sequences between your cloning step or whatever experiment you're doing to make sure everything's okay before proceeding because you really don't want to find out in the very end that something went wrong with the sequence. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you've learned something new today. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Um, please subscribe and like my videos. Until next time, everyone, this is Scyther88 signing off. Take care.